So joining me now to talk more about this is Dr. Devi. <laughs> so what do you make of this? Well, I do think that the 21-day quarantine makes sense. I mean, I think it's unfortunate this nurse got a raw deal. I don't think she needed to be taken away like a prisoner. And maybe this would have gone a little bit more smoothly if, you know, instead of going to someone and telling them you must do this and kind of holding them against their will, you know, just tell them, listen, while you were away, a lot of things have happened. Let's explain the situation to you. We really could use your help in managing this. And this is a situation we're worried about the city because, uh, well, with Dr. Spencer's case, the public wasn't necessarily at risk. He didn't have symptoms yet, but people became more worried about, you know, what if someone right. had symptoms. But, but, but it's just confusing to to the public because, okay, so she's in isolation, but she doesn't have Ebola and she doesn't have a fever. She's yeah. completely healthy at this moment. Exactly, and those and then photos she's are a be, little bit alarming. <laughs> right, so she's behind this, you know, plastic, she's in this plastic tent outside of the hospital. She's not even in the hospital, right? Yeah. She's using a porta potty to go to the I bathroom. I know, it looks very so disturbing. now she's going to be transported by a private ambulance or a private car. We don't know if that will be you know, an Ebola protected vehicle. Yeah. But I, if it's not, won't that just confuse people further? I agree. I think that part is confusing. I mean, she's not sick, so why have all of this stuff done? I think it does make sense though. I mean, you know, past that part, let's say that she was in her home. I think it makes sense to stay in your home for the 21 day period. Now, most of us don't have 21 days to just give up that way, right? So I think it would make more sense for the government officials to talk to these relief organizations and talk to these individuals and say, you know, what would make this more palatable to you? What would make you think that this is acceptable? Because we want to reassure the public, but you I don't know. think anything could. In fact, I just took, I just talked yeah. with a man who sends teams to West Africa yeah. last hour in the newsroom and he told me, here are these doctors. They're yeah. giving up their salary to go to West Africa, and yeah. they're working under the most hellish conditions that of you course. can imagine, and yeah. they're risking their lives. Exactly. After they leave West Africa, they want to come home as heroes. At least they want to be like sort of congratulated for what they do, not detained at the airport and put into an isolation ward for 21 days well, and treated like an Ebola patient, even though they don't have symptoms. Well, so he suggested point. that doctors may lie when they come back into the country. I think that's definitely a concern. I mean, so, but you brought up a couple good points, right? Why not actually recognize them as heroes? So, you know, do something like that, maybe give them an award. If they're risking their lives for charity or to help people say, listen, you know, we can donate money. We can donate supplies to these organizations. We can do other things that would make it, you know, more acceptable to you. So I don't think anything will make it totally fair. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that. But I think that, you know, we have to weigh individual liberties against the public. And there's no right answer, right? The public's, you know, perception of safety, their confidence in what's happening here, how we're managing this. There's no right answer. But I do think that these people are already risking their lives for the public, you know, for the public in West Africa, of course. Then, you know, it, they might be able to understand why people would be scared about Ebola and the fact that some of these healthcare workers who developed it, they had no idea they had been exposed. So there is a legitimate concern there about that. I mean, and then what you were... Oh, yes. But, but the most reasonable thing, in your mind at yeah. least, is to have them go to their homes. Yeah. Voluntarily exactly, quarantine themselves. Exactly, voluntarily. <laughs> Right. But with some monitoring, you know, voluntarily, right, not right. the self-monitoring right. by itself, but yeah, exactly. I mean, they're not criminals, so, you know, we can trust them. We could just talk to them and make it a little bit more clear. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully the federal government will come out with some sort of policy. You think that'll happen? Mm -hmm. Well, we need some consistency yeah. because if it varies from state to state, or like you That's said, right. people could fly to Canada or Mexico and then drive in, you know, it won't make sense if things are different depending on which airport you fly into. Right. Dr. Debbie, thanks so much for your insight. We appreciate it.